Have you ever been randomly scrolling through the internet and seen an advert that makes you think they must have read your mind, rather than just formed an extremely detailed set of demographic data based on your online presence and purchase history and applied machine learning to the issue? But if there's one thing I love more than cheap fabric, it's surprises. So a lucky dip of clearance fabric seemed like the ideal thing for me. I can even pretend I'm helping reduce fabric waste through taking stock nobody else wants. That's totally how that works, right? In the end, I purchased three bundles from two separate places. I got the mixed lucky dip from Dalston Mills, which cost £30 plus £3.99 shipping, and claimed to include at least 20 metres of fabric, which would work out at approximately £1.70 per metre. And from the somewhat interestingly named pound a metre, I got the 10 metre mixed wool bundle, priced at £25, and the 10 metre furnishing velvet bundle, also priced at £25, with £4.99 shipping, which is a whopping £2.75 a metre. I ordered both on the same day, and the Dalston Mills delivery arrived within three days. Let's do this thing and see how well the audio turns out. Welcome to the floor. The floor is where I live now. Let's take a look. I promise I opened it and I have not looked in. I just wanted to check that it was the parcel I thought it was. Okay, cool. We'll just, we'll just go. Ooh. Well, this feels like lining. Yeah, that's super. You can probably see my hand through it. I mean, I wasn't expecting anything majorly fancy as the first thing out the bag. Hmm. Okay, clearly polyester. There's quite a lot of it. Consult the measuring device. Okay, so there's just over three meters of that. It's not bad. It's not, you know, groundbreaking, but it's okay. Oh boy. Oh, hello. So this will need a lining because it is partially see-through, but also look at it. Gosh, it's not a small piece either. It is again, almost exactly three meters so far. So good. Wouldn't be surprised if this was also a synthetic, but oh, there's a little like satin brocaded flowers along with the painted white flap. I could look at that for hours. Oh, oh wow, okay. Mm, I will have to do a burn test on this because I'm not sure if this is polyester or cotton or a blend of the two, probably a blend of the two, but it looks like another biggish piece. So this again is about three meters and I'm not even halfway through the bag. Okay, well, we, okay, let's do this first. Okay. This is not me, but this is why we are here. This is why we are doing this thing. Okay, it's super thin. It feels like a cheaper craft cotton or a poly cotton. It'll make mock-ups. <sighs> it's three meters, again. I mean, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad. It's just, I would never have picked this. Such is the joys, huh? Okay, what have we got? more like it. Oh my gosh, it's got little ladybirds and birds on it and little sprigs of flowers. This is the same kind of weight. It's quite thin, probably cotton or poly cotton. Colour's so good. Just ever so slightly less than three metres. So every piece so far has been about three metres, give or take 10 or 20 centimetres or so. Okay, this I don't hate. Exact same kind of lightweight cotton, possibly poly cotton. Feels a bit smaller. That's a two metre length. Still entirely reasonable. And then I think this is our last. Yep, yeah, this is our last one. Oh, it's stretch. Oh, goodness. Oh, this doesn't feel like a natural fiber. Okay. Oh, there's loads of it. And it's not even four way stretch. It's only two way. This is fine. I will admit the one thing I did not factor in was getting stretch fabric. I don't do anything that uses stretch fabric, but I guess that's about to change because I've got loads of this. Three meters of stretch. I'm gonna go with polyester, it may even be spandex. So to recap, three meters of two-way stretch, two meters of cotton, three meters of cotton, three more meters of cotton, three more meters, this stuff which is everything, and three meters of a satin lining material, which I think makes three, six, nine, ah, uh, maths, 12, 15, 17, 20 meters of fabric. Roughly one week later, the bundles from Pound a Meter also arrived. This is a much bigger box. From memory, what we've got in here is 
10 meters of furnishing velvet split across four kinds 10 meters maybe of wool fabric which is actually i think a wool poly blend Whew. so with the velvet i really wasn't clear whether i was getting the colors that were on the website i am have not. I am in fact really excited about the colours that I do have. So I picked the furnishing velvet rather than the dressmaking velvet because it's going to be 100% polyester either way. I was worried that if I picked the dressmaking velvet I was going to get that horrible crushed stretch velvet that everyone makes their first cosplay out of, that stuff. Instead I have this weird crushed russet brown furnishing velvet but it's not stretch which is a great help. Oh wow this is more the weight of a cotton velvet and it's got this like pattern. I think this is deliberate. Again, very sturdy, good color. This I'm super excited about. Look at it, it's glorious. Oh, similar fabric to the brown one, slightly less of a crushed pattern, still enough going on that I think that is a, uh, that might be a small flaw. That's a really cool color. Oh, I love it. And then, nice, another heavier, weight like not an exciting color but it's a good hard wearing color so all four of those not stretch two of this kind of uh, equivalent weight to cotton velvet and then two of a lighter more flowy but still furnishing weight velvet that could have gone much worse and then we have the walls and wool blends which oh my god where do i even start like i said i think these are all 50 percent wool 50 percent poly oh boy weird off cut yeah this is just maybe a meter or even only half Half a meter of a bright pink boiled wool or wool melton. I love everything about this. So that's very exciting. Next we've got, this is, feels like a big piece. Uh, feel, yeah, am I confident about that? I am actually, yeah. This is a very nice suiting weight. Would not have assumed this had polyester in it. I'm sure I can do a burn test and confirm that, but maybe three meters. Measure, measure, measure. Yeah, a little over three meters. It would be great for vintage, it would be perfect for LARP kit. This I'm less psyched about. This feels like an upholstery weight fabric and it's got this kind of tapestry over pattern of herringbone. I'm not sure this is a very large piece. Oh gosh, it might be a bit over a meter. I cannot estimate anything, it's two meters. I mean, the color's good. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna make with that. That is quite heavy. That one's a bit of a miss for me, but after two really, really good fabrics, I'm not super mad. Looking at this, I thought this was gonna be a similar kind of fabric, but it's actually more like a, a coat weight. It is again, I think two meters. Yeah, just under, like maybe one meter 90. Oh, this is nice. So this has a big woven herringbone in it. It feels lovely it's a similar kind of weight again it's a coat weight it's a beautiful color it is yep i hold enough of these now that's another like two meter length i'm a sucker for a good green wool it does look like it frays quite badly so that'll be someone thing to bear in mind but oh i like that and then this is our last piece and this nice bias stripe in gray and black it's a similar kind of weight again. What most people think of when they think of wool is the sort of stuff you can make a coat out of rather than the stuff you make a suit out of, which is actually quite fine. I would hazard this is another about two meters. About two meters. This one is super fuzzy. It's got a lovely drape. So what we got? We've got two meters, four meters, six meters. I can do maths. Eight meters. This one I said was more like three. So that's 11. Couple of meters there. Forget how much I was actually supposed to get. I think it was 10. So that's well over and above what I was expecting. That's a really nice varied selection of fabrics. Gonna make things. Hello friends, welcome to my floor. It's where I belong. So we have obtained a whole range of fabulous fabrics and you're probably thinking what on earth are we going to do with them well let's dive in there has been some discussion about this fabric i shared it on some of my social media and someone was like i don't think that's a lining material i think it's a satin faced chiffon. I am undecided on that matter. However, I don't think that actually matters. I've had an idea for a little while now that I want to make something specifically to wear with. I have a couple of pieces from a company called Hysteria Machine. They make 
Accessories. We're gonna go with accessories. I have a very specific idea in mind for a photo shoot I want to do with those. I think this is going to get included in that. I'd like to say I've spent a long time researching ancient Greek clothing, but I'll be honest, I've not spent a long time researching because it turns out ancient Greek clothing is a rectangle and two safety pins. So we are halfway there. This guy and this guy, I've had a look on their website. These are, I think, 100% cotton, if I've identified them correctly. My gut instinct is to go, well, I'll make a nice summer dress. I have too many summer dresses and I don't want to wear dresses all of the time. Definitely this one, maybe not this one. With the bugs and the birds, it kind of edges over the line from fun, trendy print to children's entertainer. I need to fortify and finally make a button-up shirt. I have one now that I really like the fit of. I need to take a pattern off it. I need to make a shirt. So those currently, to me, just look like suffering. I don't like this one. No, so this is going to be mock-ups, possibly lining. They weren't all going to be winners. Again, I just want to make a dress. Does anyone else get this where you're just like, okay, I could make a whole bunch of complicated things like button-up shirts or trousers, or, or I could just make a dress. Make a dress in like a day. Dresses take no time. This is a very lovely fabric. It's very loose. It has a lovely drape to it. I think it's got some viscose in it. I did check the website. I don't remember. I will probably make a dress by sheer inertia, but I will at least pretend to think of other things that I could make out of it. I could make Trying to think what else I actually wear. Don't think I want polka dotted trousers. Clots? Maybe clots. So the majority of the fabrics that have come out of the Dalston Mills bag, I'm like, that's everyday wear. I will make clothes that I will wear in day-to-day -day life. Most of them haven't immediately jumped out and screamed LARP kit to me, basically because they're prints and prints don't usually work for LARP kit. Having said that, <sighs> Okay, so I know that the sensible thing to do, I could make a dress out of this. I could make a dress out of this. I could make a blouse out of this. I could make any number of things out of this that I would be able to wear in day-to-day -day life. And yet what I really want to do is make LARP kit out of it. And what is worse, I want to make LARP kit for a character who I haven't played in two years because the system has ended but it's her colours. I'm in two minds about this. Let me know if you think it's a bad idea to make something for day-to-day -day wear and regular washing out of a fabric that has basically raw edges everywhere. And or let me know of a convincing argument why this is too nice to just make LARP kit out of. But for my first ever LARP event, I did want to make a blue chiffon sarafan, which is a Central Asian going into Russia overdress, not hugely dis similar to uh, a hanger rock, a viking apron dress. And I could finally do that. Just don't know whether I should. And then finally there's, there's this stuff. It's not unpleasant. It's a very thin, kind of drapey, two-way stretch. Uh, I'm not gonna wear this day to day. I, I'm just not. I guess I can use it for a costume. Like I suppose I could make some kind of ghost, bride, or vampire. Oh no. Then. Moving on. So we're now into the pounder meter fabric stuff, which is mostly, mostly going to be LARP kit. Weirdly, this one is the one that I immediately had an idea for. Allow me to explain. I have never seen Outlander, probably will never see Outlander. And previously I have not remotely cared about Outlander. It has led to a whole bunch of people doing kind of amazing tartan or plaid 18th century kit. And I'm jealous and I want it. So my idea for this was something not dissimilar to an Italian gown. Closed front, fitted bodice, gathered skirt open in front. Nice fitted back, waist seam, none of the messing around that the English and French gowns have. We're going to do the most simple version and I'm going to try and make it so it can be worn without stays underneath. The idea being that this will be something that I can wear day to day or for LARP kit. I'm, I'm very happy with that. Let's go through these three. There's 
this one which is kind of stripy and it's very much a heavier dress weight. You could use it for a coat, that wouldn't be a problem. There's this green one with a woven chevron pattern, heavier dress weight. And then there's this crosshatched grey and white one which is, the fabric is lighter but it has a stiffer hand to it. So it's got more body but less weight. Probably doesn't make any sense. So I had a couple of ideas for these guys. One idea was that I could make something not overly complicated, theoretically usable for both LARP and every day. For that I was looking at some vintage patterns. This one just a long sleeve dress. Don't think I have enough fabric for it unfortunately. Probably not. This one is like a beach cover-up style thing, basically indistinguishable from a robe. That's probably a little bit more challenging to wear day to day, I suspect. There's this guy, which is actually a night dress, but nobody knows. If you make it up in wool, it's clearly not a night dress. So that's one of the options. Another option, just make dresses. I've got this kind of interesting pinafore affair from I think the 1970s or this guy which is like a very loosely fitted sack dress. Theoretically wearable for both LARP and regular times. Slightly more normal life than LARP possibly. And then the other idea was not enough people at LARP wear coats. I think a lot of people design their costumes and then go oh crap I'm also going to need a coat. No, start by designing your coat. It's what you're going to be wearing most of the time. It's an important part of your costume. So I've got this pattern which has like a collarless duster thing, short or long. I think that could work really really well. Or indeed I probably don't have enough fabric for the long sleeved dress but I could maybe combine two of them. Or I have this vintage dressing gown pattern which they can't tell that it's supposed to be a dressing gown and not a wrap coat, especially if it's LARP kit. It's fine, you can use this. So those are the kind of ideas I've got for those three. The other possibility I briefly entertained is I have this book which I very much enjoy and there's a variety of early Tudor menswear in this. Let's talk about these velvets for a second. So I've got two stiffer kind of heavyweight velvets and then I've got two of these I guess crushed. I'll be honest they look more wrinkled than crushed but crushed I think is the direction they were going. I could do one of these like long sleeved dresses that I wasn't sure I had enough fabric for out of any of these. I could also have a look at some of the stuff out of this book. So there's a really nice simple doublet pattern that's kind of open at the front, laces closed over a shirt. Oh, I like to try that. They have this that they call a jacket which is like a wrap front over thing with short sleeves and then this which they call a coat which is the same basic idea but with a center front closure and sleeve that's gathered at the top and fitted at the bottom. They all look pretty simple to construct. They're all potentially in the offing and some of these fabrics might be the right right ones for those, at least for a first go before I get good at it and want to waste, you know, real wool and silk on them. The other thing I have been looking at is of course the incomparable patterns of Fashion 3. There's a lot in here that I want to make. Oh boy, is there a lot. What I've been particularly looking at in the context of the velvets are the kind of loose hanging over gowns. Some of them have sleeves, some of them don't. There's examples of ones worn by men and women. If you have a amount of a very plush looking fabric like velvet, especially if it's a velvet like these that's 100% polyester and can look a bit shiny and cheap, you can counteract some of that by using it plentifully. So if you were to make a very kind of like tight fitting garment or a short skirt or whatever out of these fabrics they might not look very luxurious but if you have a four meter hem on this sleeveless gown that you're wearing over the top of other stuff. One, you don't have to worry about getting it dirty because these are polyester and you can just wash them and two, it looks very extravagant and very luxurious. Patterns of Fashion 3 instantly also has the, the idea that I had for this. I love this fabric. <laughs> Look at the colour, it's great. There isn't a huge amount of it so I don't know if I'm going to get sleeves or not but there are a couple of patterns for sleeveless doublet slash jerkins. I'm not not confident on which one's which. I think that's where I want to go with this, especially since because it is in the style of a boiled wool or a wool melton, you can cut this and it won't fray. You can do dagging on this. You can also do pinking on this. And I think that some combination of slashes, cutouts, what have you is going to happen. And I'm quite excited about that. Which brings me to the elephant in the room, which is this thing. So the good news is it's not as heavy as I remembered it being. I would describe this texture as 
hotel carpet. And I don't really know, as a result, what I want to do with it. It's not like some of the other ones where it's got a nice reverse. So if I did anything, I would probably have to line it. I'm wondering if a very simple coat might actually be the best choice for this one. It's the combination of the colour and the texture and the, the weight of it that I'm just, I'm a little bit lost. This is where you guys come in. Can you think of a use? for this fabric. If you can, please leave me a message in the comments down below. Who knows, you may see it happen. I may just have an existential crisis and make a cat bed out of it or something. Not that he'd sleep on it, the little bastard. So in summary, was it worth it? Probably. Okay, so I am for sure a weird edge case in that this way round, where you get a piece of fabric and then you figure out what you're going to do with it, is the way that I am used to working. I use mostly secondhand and reclaimed fabrics. I don't buy a lot of new off the bolt fabric. It's a very weird experience for me and as you will no doubt see at some point, I tend to wildly misjudge how much fabric I'm going to need for a thing. But anyway, in general, I would say the fabrics I got from Dalston Mills were a bit higher quality. Certainly, if you are a more general sewist, I think that's probably the one you want to go for. They do a couple of different options. I'm interested to try, they do a plain fabric only option. I'd quite like to have a go at that at some point, just because that I think gives me a slightly more options in terms of possibly have more things that I could use for LARP kit or costumes, as opposed to stuff that I'm looking at and going that needs to be a everyday piece of clothing and can't not be modern. With the pound a meter stuff, overall I would say that the quality was lower, wasn't as fast, customer service wasn't quite as communicative, but I feel like the variety of fabrics I got, even though I was actually specializing more, was really really cool. And I was able to specifically choose things that I knew were going to be suitable for the kinds of projects I wanted to do. Now, if you don't know what kind of projects you want to do, probably not the best option. If you're starting sewing, beginner sewist, and you're like, well, I think I maybe want to make clothes, maybe, don't really know, go for the Dolson Mills bag. It's going to be much better suited to that kind of thing. If you're like, yes, I would absolutely like some 50% wool out of which to make random LARP kit. I do feel like I got my money's worth. I think there was actually slightly more fabric than advertised. So anyway, I uh, need to tidy my workroom so I can get on with sewing. So I guess we're gonna wrap this up now. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to stick around, hit the subscribe button. You'll probably get to see various of these projects happening over the next little while. In my description box, you'll find a link to my coffee page. Yeah, I feel good about coffee today. Still can't pronounce that consistently. You can leave a donation to support the channel. At the moment, I'm working on two big projects. One is a series of videos about making kit for outdoor LARP games. Absolutely see some of these pieces of fabric showing up in that. And that's what the goal on my Kofi page relates to. Also, I am collecting a whole bunch of vintage fancy dress patterns, which I am going to make and release during the month of October. Don't actually know how many of those I'm gonna get done at this point. It's gonna depend on how exciting the rest of the year ends up being. Anyone who donates 10 pounds or more, non-anonymously on the Kofi page will get their name put in one of those October videos. Hopefully that all makes sense. I forget how many times I've explained that at this point. As always, it's a joy to have you around and I hope this slightly weird video was still fun. We'll get back to sewing soon and I will see you next time.